Now, what I'd like people to do is basically, you know, the first person can start at this target and work your way down the targets here, and then we'll put that group away, and we're going to separate you into groups, and then once we get to the point where the dogs are really starting to respect and trust you, then we're going to go on to some of the inflatable targets. Some of them have textures, some of them are a little smoother, and by the end of the day, we're going to start off with a dog touching that target right there, going over these little cavalettis here, touching this pad, coming up over these obstacles, and at the very end, we're going to tell them to wait as we secure this, and then we tell them touch, and they're going to touch this one. Won't that be cool? Well, if, yeah, especially if you have a papillon, it's just going to be a little bit, <laughs> a little bit lower down there. Now, when they do this, they're telling you, "I trust you," and you're leading them. Now, here's what's going to happen for those of you who've got the really smart dogs. What's going to happen is they're going to get used to this, and they're going to say, "Hmm, I got this." As you're gating them and leading them, they're going to bypass your hand. They're going to run right over to this and they're going to step on it and they're going to say, give me my treat. <laughs> who led who? So at that point, you don't reward them. Because you want to make sure that you made that happen. If you didn't make that happen and you reward them, then basically they're training you. And that's opposite of the goal we want to get. Once we start to get those things going pretty smooth there, now we're creating that bond where they're like, what's next? What's next? And when you get that, then you can start your dog show training. But this could take days, it could take weeks, it could take months. But what you want to use as the gauge is you get small, or, or pads that are inflatable like this, get them to put their front paws, get them to put their rear paws. You can consistently move them around. Okay, yes? I just have a question. Huh? You're saying the dog goes to the, to the target by itself, um, not to, tr to treat it. Not Correct. I'm teaching my dog shaping to go out to stuff, you know, and to offer that behavior. How is that... Okay, when, when you send your dog off to do things, it's going to be able to tell the difference between what you're doing here and what you're doing there. Because I'm standing still and, and I'm looking at the cone and all of a sudden she, oh, I know what you want. You want me to go around the cone. Right. And what kind of a leash are you using when you do that? Exactly. So, and, but in this case, this, the difference is they're on the leash. They're on the leash. Yeah. They can be off leash, but here's the thing. When you're doing this, you're leading them with your hand. Okay. Okay. So you're directing them to that spot right there. And yep, thank you for asking that question. The dogs are so incredibly smart, they can tell the difference between these things. They know when they're doing agility, they know when they're doing rally, they know when they're doing, you know, all these different things. And these skills are going to help you with all those. Because now you're going to be more accurate with your palm direction of when you're sending these dogs out. Okay, can you hold your dog where your dog won't escape? Okay, so just, just kind of stand straight here. Straight in one line right here. Right in front of me, going this way. Why facing that direction? Facing me. Okay. Then, now that you guys are all comfortable, let's line up according to speed. So the fastest dog on that side over there. Can I borrow your perfectly trained dog? Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Ah, ah, ah. Okay. So my first lesson with her is going to be, ah, going to be boundaries. Ah. I'm going to do two things. Ah! Ah! You're too close. I'm going to teach... Ah! There you go. Good. I'm going to teach her stay, which is this stop sign right here, and also the ah! audio signals, which is that ah! sound. Now, I'm going to put the bait in front of her nose, and I'm going to lead her to a target. Touch. Yay! 
that was so good. That was awesome. See how trained she is? Okay. Look at she's ready. Okay, I put that in front. I'm going to lead her to the next target. I'm going to go to a bright yellow one now. Touch. Look at you, how good she is. I told you this dog was trained. Oh my goodness. Do you guys notice a difference in her focus now? Yes, right on you. Yep. Okay, let's go over here. Good, 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 good. Touch. Yay, that was good. Sit. Oh my goodness. We just taught a show dog how to sit. Okay, did I have to do ah uh, that time? Did I have to do that sound? All I did was body language now. Why is that? She's learning that I'm communicating with her in a language she knows. This way. Around and back to mom. Wasn't that cool? Yay! Did she follow my palm direction? And how long have I known this dog? Two minutes. Yeah, we had kisses this morning, but that was about it. <laughs> okay, so I want you... And how much eye contact did I have with her? Absolutely none. Because I wanted her to focus on this hand. If I look at her in the eye, where is she going to look? At my eye. She's not going to look at my hand. Okay, so I want you... Don't let her do that. So you make, yep, there you go. Make that ah sound. You can put a stop sign out. And I want you to put the bait in your lead hand. And I want you to lead her to this red target over here. Don't let her jump on you. Your lead, the one that you're holding with the leash. Okay, so put it right in front of her nose like I did. Okay, and then slowly lead her to this red target. There you go. There you go. Keep going. Good. Now tell her touch. touch. Okay. She touched. There you go. Reward her quickly. Good. And make it seem like, oh my gosh, you are genius there. And no eye contact. Okay. Now another thing too, why do you want to show dogs? Because I think it would be fun. Yes. So smile. <laughs> I, nobody does. How many of you have a clue what we're doing here? No, even me. You know, the, this, this is my first time. <laughs> I'm same here. We're all learning, so there's no right or wrong and no perfect. But what we want to do in stages is we want to keep this hand down like this and it's okay if she does that because you want her to focus on this look at how how amazing this dog is doing you don't know how good you have a trainer you are <laughs> okay so now lead her to here and tell her touch Jaden, touch touch yay give her a treat okay now get her attention on your hand again there you go bring her around watch your palm direction your palm is pointed wherever you want her to go. Now lead her to this yellow one. Tell her touch. touch. Look at that. You're a trainer. Okay. Yeah, go to that hand. Okay, get, shake your hand so she looks at your hand. Okay, don't make her dizzy. Okay. <laughs> lead her here and say touch. touch. Look at that. What an amazing trainer you are. Now do that and have fun all the way around in different dots. Okay, next person. Lead your dog over to the silver one. Okay, who's leading who? I know. I know. It's like, where's my... I'm used to using the other thing. Okay, let's do this. Come here. There you go. Say touch. Now, I, I don't know if I should be tighter with the... Nope. The, that's the worst thing you could do, is be tighter with that. Now you're using the wrong hand. There you go. Okay, now go to the end of that lead, and just stand up and don't look at her. Okay, because you're staring her down, big time. What happens as soon as she stopped looking at her? 
The dog went right over there like, what are we going to do now? She doesn't want that pressure. And that's the reason why you're not getting her to touch that. Because you're looking at her. That's pressure right there. So I want you to drop your hand down. No, 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 no. Let go of that lead. Drop your hand down. Don't look at her. And lead her to that target. Put it right in front of her nose. Slowly. Good. Good. Praise her. Good. 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 What are you using for a treat? Just what you have. Okay. Did you make it into small pieces? Well, it broke, so. Okay. Oh, Let me give you a bigger piece. Okay. Use a big piece. Okay. There you go. Good. Good. No eye contact. Good. 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 So what is this dog telling you? She doesn't want to do it. <laughs> okay, now you're focusing on the wrong thing. Now you just pulled. Yep. Yeah, she's and you got eye contact. Yep. Let me show you something. Can I borrow you for a second? Okay, I want you just to hold the end of this leash and don't do anything. Okay, and I want you to follow me. All right, and we're just going to stand right here. How does that feel? Yeah. Does this dog respect or trust her? No. no. And isn't this the most incredible gauge right here? This shows you exactly where you're at with your... Look at that one's on the wobble board over there. Like, you're, you're, that's advanced stuff, ma'am. I'm only playing with you. <laughs> She's like, oh no, I'm in trouble. <laughs> Te teacher's pet over there, yeah. <laughs> okay, so here you are with this dog, and this eye contact is causing this dog not to want to be with you, because that's pressure right there. You know, you're doing this because you want to have fun, but for your dog, it's not fun. Right. So smile, woohoo, you know, make some sounds, and then you want to get her to the point where she will actually touch that. You reward her, and she goes, oh, this is what fun is. Okay, so let's stop from that one, move over to another target, and see if you can get her without the pressure of us watching. You go ahead and do that. Okay, everybody watch her now. I'm only joking. <laughs> okay, just over there, that purple one. Okay, next dog. Okay, you broke your communication. So you got the attention, and then all of a sudden you've lifted all, yep. Yeah. So keep it right in front of that note. No, 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 you broke it again. Keep in mind what I did with that first dog. I had that right in her nose the whole time. Okay, so put your... Nope, stop lifting up. Put, your, put that bait right in the nose and lead slowly to this target. There you go. Yay, that was awesome. She says, I don't know what I did, but I'm getting fed. <laughs> okay, go to the next one. Nope, you broke that communication. There you go, there you go. Yay! That was awesome. Okay, go to the next one. Ah, you're like right. You broke that communication again. If that dog goes to the ground or looks somewhere else, then you broke that communication. Okay, next dog. No eye contact. Okay, you have no communication. You got to have that. You guys, remember what I did with that first dog that didn't know me? I put that bait right in front of their nose and kept it in front of their nose the whole way. Yep. There you go. Nice and slow. Touch. Touch. Yay! That was awesome. Okay, go to the next one. I know this seems like a ridiculous exercise, but this is telling you so much about you and your dog. Okay. Good. Are you a professional handler? No. Well, then you just pay close attention or what? Yeah. All right. High five. <laughs> okay. So follow the leader. All right. Next dog. Come over here on this target. Okay. You're just pulling. 
You got to have that dog. Yep, there you go. So your dog should, even if treats are on the ground, should bypass those treats because you have your food right in their nose. Did you? So you're not, your hand's not in front of that dog's nose. Got to put that treat right on their nose. Right on the nose. Now slowly guide to another target. Which one? Anyone. Slowly, slowly. Oh, I'm having trouble with this. No, you're just not doing what I'm telling you to do. <laughs> Put it right in front of the nose. And slowly go to the next target. There you go. Now say, yay! See the difference, guys? And she, but she will go to any of those without with it. But that's not what I want you to do. I know. You guys... Everybody stop for a second. I want you to listen carefully. There was a person who put something on Facebook one time. It was really funny. They said, you're not going to get the results that Eric is teaching in a class if you don't do what Eric teaches you to do. And if you kind of do it, it's not, it's, you're going to get kind of the results. Now, you saw me take a dog that I've never seen before and did that perfectly. Wouldn't you say? I had communication the whole time. The dog started to earn respect and trust. The dog was focused on me. And it was so simple because all I did was put the treat in front of the nose and then walk to a thing and praise her when she touched that target. It's not that difficult of an exercise. But if you want to put your own little twist on it, then it's not going to work. You have to perfect this first, then you go to the next phase. Then you go to the next phase. If you don't do it the way I'm teaching you, you're going to shortchange you and your dog, guaranteed. Okay, so you, who has not done this yet? You? No, I've done it. You've done it. Okay, everybody's done this? All right, praise your dogs and put your dogs away. Group two, grab your dogs, please. Okay, line up according to speed. Okay, according to speed and beauty. <laughs> Everybody make sure you have treats. Anybody need any treats? Raise your hand, I'll come by, I'll be the treat man. Nope, got him? Okay, good. Okay, I want you to lead your dog to that red target. I don't want you to break communication. Keep, your, keep that right in front of that dog's nose. Broken. Okay, everybody should be watching this. If your communication breaks, you shake that hand. Keep it focused. There you go. That's perfect. Touch. Yay. Good. Okay. Go to that silver one over there. Way down there. Way down there. Yeah. Long way to keep communication going. That's good. Watch your eye contact. Oh, sorry. Yep. Good girl, Berkeley. Yay! There you go. Okay, try that wobbly one over in the corner. Or that purple one. No, no. Just try to get her to touch. Watch your eye contact. Oh, a bird. Yay. Okay, let me get everybody's attention up here. So, what does that tell you about the relationship between her and her dog? But it did fine here, but once it got to something a little bit higher, then the dog says, mm, I'll trust you here, but I don't trust you there yet. So that is your next hurdle to, to overcome. Now, one thing that was really good is she did a fantastic job of keeping that bait in front of that dog's nose. 
Now you want to make sure that you consistently do that with your lead hand because you're teaching them to focus on the hand with the lead. Because later on, as you get more advanced, you're going to switch over to your right hand. And you're going to show them on the right hand, too. You want the dog to learn that whatever hand that leash is in, that's the one that we focus on. Yeah, you can keep trying. Okay, next dog. Red target, please. Good job. Ooh. <laughs> He touched, he went back, but he went over purposely the first time. <laughs> okay, let's do this one right here in front of me. Good job. Good job. Back, there you go. Good. Okay, try that metal one. Or the one that looks like metal. The silver one. Yeah. Good. Touch. Yeah, good. That was awesome. Okay, red one. Good job. Good job. Good job. Good. Yeah, that was awesome. Okay, let's go to this yellow one. Yeah, we got it. Good. Okay, go to this purple one. Good, good redirection. Uh, 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 you're pulling now. Okay, go back and do it. Okay, so you did really good, but then all of a sudden when she lost focus, you pulled. There you go. Communication is everything at this point, guys. Shake your hand if you have to. There you go, good. Okay, go play over there for a little while. Okay, next dog, pink target. Very good. Oh, there you go. Good, good. Nice. Okay, yellow target. Touch. Yeah, good job. Okay, yellow target over here. Beautiful. Watch your eye contact. Touch. Good. Okay, silver target. Beautiful job. Okay, go play. Okay, next one, pink target. Very good. <laughs> Yay! That was good. Okay, yellow target. Ah, ah, ah. You didn't, so when you took off, you just took off and pulled. Shake your hand, get that attention, and then make sure that nose is right on that piece of bait. All right. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Yes, good job. Okay, purple right here. Good, good, good. Yes, perfect. Okay, hit the red target at the end and then play a little bit. First of all, you can see that if you lose that communication, it breaks. Shake your hand, reestablish that. Do not pull with these leashes. If you pull with that leash, you're going backwards. Yes? Do you want just the shake of the hand or can you call the name or would you rather just do the shake? The more you can do with just the hand, the better. And the less. Yeah, the less vocal. Exactly. Because we're trying to get these dogs to focus on our hands. And if we look at them or we're communicating verbally, then a lot of times what will happen is they'll focus here, not on those hands. So that's really, and this is the beginning stage. Don't rush this. This is the foundation of how your training is going to go. If you guys think that you treat this like it's not really an important skill and you move on to the next step, then what's going to happen is you're not going to have solid communication and it's always going to be breaking. Yes, the foundation. If you start to get this part down really solid, and I don't care if you walk around for two weeks with bait in front of their nose, they have to learn that that hand is where all the communication comes. Your next phase of this is to make sure your palm is pointed in the right direction. 
because right now you're still learning yourself. So a lot of people hold that bait where the dog can see it and they're leading the dog to the this next station like this, but where's your palm pointed? So you gotta think about that next on the next step. Okay, group two, put your dogs away. Group three, three grab your dogs please. And if you guys are sitting out there, you should be watching what's going on because you're going to learn from this too, not just when you have a dog. All right, I want you to lead this dog to the red target, please. Very nice. Good. And touch. But yeah, but that's not afraid. Right. This dog is super smart. So he's trying to manipulate the situation right here. He manipulates me every day. Yep. So here's a situation where, again, you got to be smiling and happy and ignore the dog, not beg, but just simply put that treat in front of that, that nose and get that dog to go to the next spot. Good. 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 There it is. There it is. Yay! That's good. That was awesome. Okay, let's go ahead and go to this next bluish turquoise, whatever color one. See, that was awesome. She didn't pull. She put that right in front of the dog's nose. He knows exactly what she wants. But he's like, I'm not going to do this. This dog is so smart. Now, when she gets this dog to start doing this stuff and moves on to the next level, she's going to have an amazing dog in this ring. Shake it a little bit and slowly, slow. Almost like you're pulling with a fine thread attached to the nose. So what would happen if she just took this dog and wanted to start training it like a show dog? I tried it and it doesn't work. And it's not going to work. <laughs> exactly. This dog right here is not going to do anything for you until you earn the respect and trust. There you go. Nap time. <laughs> I can identify. Yeah. And this is good. You know, it may take her three weeks to do this. It could take her two months to do this. But I, I guarantee you, this dog is going to do whatever he wants to do other than what she wants. But when he masters it? When he masters it, he's going to be an amazing show dog. Yep. Good. Take him over to the, to the corner over there. Work over there. You'll get there. Look at that. Look. And he just took off. Look at that. Perfect. Okay. Beautiful job. Beautiful job. Beautiful, beautiful. Oh, fantastic. Good. Stop being creepy. Come in. <laughs> I I keep hearing da 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 da. <laughs> da 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 <laughs> Look at this, guys. Is that beautiful or what? Give him a hand. <laughs> Woohoo! Even a little play in there. That's awesome. Okay. All right. I want you to take this dog and give me a down and back, that corner to here. Very nice. Very nice. Beautiful job. That was nice. Okay. I want you to do the exact same thing, but this time you're going to do it with your right hand. Beautiful.
That's okay. That's okay. That was good. Give her a hand. Now, tell me what went through your head. Don't screw this up. <laughs> <laughs> and you did an excellent job of putting that bait right in front of his nose like that and getting his attention. Now, did your mind play with you a little bit a when little you bit. Yeah. yeah. It's yeah. like which way do I turn now yeah. that I have it in my right hand? And once that happened and it threw your brain off a little bit, how did your dog react to that? It threw him off. It also. threw him off and he went on the opposite side. So you see that? Now, if you guys can be confident in your left, listen up. If you guys can be confident in your left hand, your right hand, and know what you're going to do, because this dog did fantastic on the down and back with the left hand. But I could see in her body language that she had to think about which way to turn. And as soon as that happened, the dog, it threw him off a little bit, and then he went over to the other side, the dark side. Okay. All right. Go ahead and play with him over at the end. Oh yeah, absolutely. Because that gets your confidence up. And if you have your confidence, and that teaches them to watch any hand that has the lead in it. And that's why you want to treat from that hand. You want to lead from that hand. And you don't want to confuse them by using both hands in that, especially in the beginning. Yeah, I always treat with my right hand. Right. And I'm watching her, and she's looking at this Exactly. Hand. I want her to look at this hand, Right. But she's not. She's not. Oh, because she knows that's where the treats are going to come okay. from. There's a lot of times where I try to look for something that's going to distract my dog on a down and back, and they look at that, and I stand back for a second and let the judge see that. They can't take that image out of their head. I shake my hand, bring the dog back to the judge. But can you see the impact that that would create? But most people are too nervous for that. They think it's hurry, 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 I got to do this. Right. <laughs> so what I want is I want you to be calm. I want you to be confident. I want you to be able to say, wow, look at that. That's nice. Shake your hand. Come back to the judge. That's what handling is right there. Okay. All right. Let me see this dog down and back to that corner, please. You're focused on your dog 100%. Good. Good, 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 very nice. Watch your palm direction. No, your palm, yep, there you go. And you're focused on your dog too much. Okay, now put your dog in your right hand. This is gonna go terribly wrong. <laughs> Stop looking at your dog. Okay, down and back. Yep, down and back. Don't look at your dog, down and back. And your dog is telling me this too. Saying, she looks at me. Okay, why are you on the left side? <laughs> okay, so head up, back up, and turn. There you go. There it is. There it is. There it is. Back up. Don't look at your dog. Turn. There it is. There it is. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Fantastic. <laughs> Yay. Isn't that cool? So this makes you think more. And a lot of times what happens is actually you did better with the opposite hand. And the reason why she did better with the opposite hand is because she had to focus so much on what she was doing, she stopped focusing on her dog. And her dog looked better. So these are some things that you're going to find out about your dog and yourself when you do the left hand and you do the right hand. Okay, take your dog to the end and go play. Thank you. All right, let's see this dog down and back, please. Good, watch your eye contact. Good, shake your hand. Good, good. Very nice, very nice, very nice. That was awesome. Okay, switch over to your right hand. Okay, back up. Turn and go. That's a tough one, huh? Okay, come back. <laughs> I turned around. I know. You didn't have to tell me that. I saw that. <laughs> okay. That's okay. Okay, shake your hand. Okay, back up. Good, good. Don't worry about that. Don't worry about that. Just keep your hand steady. 
Good, good, good. Okay, now back up. Turn. There you go. Good, good. Just keep your hands steady. Don't worry about the dog. Don't worry about the dog. Okay, there you go. <laughs> now, when you came back to me, you looked like you were going to the guillotine. So you, Did I have to look on yeah. my face? <laughs> I wear my... <laughs> I know. I saw that. Go play. So, can you imagine if you guys videotape yourselves when you're doing this? You're going to see... Okay, I can't think while I'm walking. Uh, I have resting bitch face. <laughs> yeah, you had the t-shirt, so. <laughs> but you're going to see all the things the judge is going to see. So this is excellent training to throw yourself off sometime. But also keep in mind that what we're learning today is premature. What we're learning today, we should not be doing until all of yesterday's stuff is solid. Where these dogs are stacking with their rear feet, when these dogs are stacking with their front feet, all four feet, doing obstacles, doing everything with body communication. Then we do this kind of training. You're only doing this kind of training today because we don't have seven days to do this. <laughs> we only had yesterday and today. So don't worry about things not being perfect with your dogs. Now, if the dog is on the wrong side, don't worry about it. Just you be perfect. Good body posture, good hand communication. The dog will conform to you. And make sure you have that bait right in front of their face you will get to the point where these dogs are going to be absolutely perfect, but don't focus on the problems. If you focus on the problems, you're going to drive yourself nuts, and you're not going to have a smile, and you're going to have the resting bitch face, and the dog is going to say, there's no way to please this lady. Okay? All right. So let's see this one down and back, please. Good. Oh. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Watch that eye contact your dog is telling on you. Good. 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 Very nice. Good job. Okay. Now, right hand. Don't look. Don't look. See, your dog's telling me. <laughs> Good, good, good. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. You can wiggle a finger, shake your hand, get the attention on that hand. There you go. There you go. Keep going. Good, 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 good. Yay! Even professional handlers can do this. <laughs> okay, take her around and go play. Good. Now, this is how these dogs start to really focus on these hands. That's beautiful. Okay, next. Wow, look at the pointer, guys. That's awesome. How important is it to make sure that we have that perfected before we move on? Very important. Very important because we're teaching the dog this is where everything comes from. Tell me how you felt and what you experienced with this exercise with your dog. I feel like from the time he was over here to the time he was over here, there was like some time space continuum in the middle, and I ended up with a different dog over there. A different dog. Yeah, give her a hand. That's awesome. It's not easy, but if you work hard at this, you can go forward. Now, if you tried to train that dog to become a show dog, how successful would you be? Not at all. Because that dog would not do anything that you ask. But then if you tried to train this dog over here, you have a better chance of being successful. That's just the first exercise, guys. We got two days of this stuff. And if you practice these little times, some of you will continuously practice this. Others will just say, eh, it's not that important. I'll move on to the next thing that's more fun. And if you move on to the next thing that's more fun, you're hurting yourself. Because this is so important. Like, for instance, when you guys learn about things tomorrow, you're going to find that one of the most important skills that you're going to learn in training a show dog is how to enter the ring. Most of you will go, I just walk into the ring. 
the judge isn't looking most of the time anyway. And usually we don't have any place to run, so I'm just going to set my dog up right there. But entering the ring, if you can take a dog, and let's say this is the gate right here. Dog, into the ring, please. I want it perfect right here. Okay, come back. Let's go ahead and put your dog over here again. I'm going to dissect this a little bit. The first thing you did was hunch over your dog. Okay. So your dog went down. Okay. If you're standing up, your dog will be up like this. The second thing is, especially with a breed like this, you started off running forward. Mm -hmm. Running forward, the dog wants to get out in front like that. So if you want to set the pace of this dog, of you being in charge, the best thing you can do is get them to focus on your hand, okay. and you're going to get square with the dog, okay. because that way the dog will be straight. Okay. And then you're going to back up okay. and let your dog follow that hand. And if you do that, your dog is going to be straight and focused on what it needs to focus on, which is your hand. So go ahead and get in front of your dog. Don't eyeball your dog. Okay, let out some lead. Okay, stop looking at your dog. Look over your dog. Okay, put the bait in the lead hand. Okay, now walk backwards, then turn and go. Beautiful. Beautiful, right there, right there. Oh, yeah. See what a difference that made right there? Okay, when you, you're, when you, look at me. When you come into the ring and you're like your competition where you're over your dog and looking at your dog, your dog scooches down and your dog looks up at you. There's no possible way for it to have a true natural gait when it's looking at you. Because it's doing long, short, long, short. And when you get in front and you get that dog to start focusing on your hand, you can start to back up. I need a leash without a dog on it. Great, thank you. That's perfect. Okay, let's say my dog's over here. If I walk, I don't care where my dog is at. I want my dog to follow me. So if I walk backwards, what happens to my dog? Straight. It gets perfectly straight. That's what I want the judge to see. Perfectly straight. So now I step away from my dog and now my dog follows my hand. See how that works? And I don't have to look at my dog at all. So good job. If you can take a dog, and this is the gate, and you can train this dog to look good, the second its nose and foot passes through this gate to where you're going to set it up, you, it takes a lot of skill to do that, especially when we're in a short, tight, little cramped area. So if you focus on this skill, it makes all the other skills simple or easier to do. But the skill that I find that most people that take training programs or private lessons and stuff like that, the skill that they skip the most often is this skill. Even when I tell them how important that is. Because this teaches the dogs to focus on your hand. You're now communicating with that dog. She had no communication with this dog when she first started this, this skill. She had no respect or trust from that dog when she first started this skill. So if she tried to teach this dog to enter the ring without this little exercise right here, then she could have gone months without being successful. But you're going to see her tomorrow and she's going to be very successful. Because now she's starting to develop the relationship with this dog. This dog is saying, you know what, I'll go ahead and listen to her. She's proving to me that she's strong enough to be the leader. Now, if you skip these little tiny steps and you try to just move on to the next block, the rest of your training will reflect that. I guarantee you. 
if you take this serious, take the next step serious, take the next step serious, you guys will be able to train some of the most difficult dogs in the world. You start off pretty simple where we will take just simple little objects like this and these are great to work with puppies. They're flat, they're easy to stand on, sometimes they have different types of textures and we put these down as targets. And even a puppy who has just been weaned that's getting on some solid food now, you can have that little piece of kibble or whatever you're feeding your dogs and you can lead them with your hand to the object, say touch, point to it, and when they touch, you give them the little treat. As Tammy's gonna demonstrate how she would get a puppy prepared to start learning. And we're gonna focus on watching her hand because she's training the dog to follow her hand and she's getting the dogs to do something that she wants them to do. Like, if you, it could be any little task. The dog can't do it on their own. The dog can't put their own twist on it. But you also have to know what you're doing when you're doing this stuff. You can't just say, well, I think I'm gonna go here, I think I'm gonna go there. Okay, so Tammy, I want you to pick three easy objects for the dog to work on. Okay, that sounds good. Now, I asked her to pick easy objects. Easy objects are flat, they can have different colors, and maybe a little bit difference in texture. As you start getting higher on the objects or more texture on the objects, then that's more of a medium to more advanced, like the bigger objects over there. You'll find that the dogs won't really fight you on the easy objects, unless they're really super headstrong and just don't respect and trust you. And then if you try to start off with all the big fun stuff that you see on YouTube, you could not get past that because this is too advanced. They're like, no, nah, I don't trust you enough to do this. Okay, so you said yellow, orange, orange and blue. All right, so watch as she leads the dog to the object and then tells the dog to touch. Yay! So you act, have to ask like the invented peanut butter when they do it. See how she's leading with her hand. Yay! Okay, over to the blue. And the dog's following the hand. Now the dog kind of led, yay! That was good. Now you noticed on the blue one, the dog was like, oh, I'm gonna get to that one because I'm gonna get a cookie. Yeah. So she led the dog past the object right there because you have to be the one that makes that happen. Well, this is how you prepare that dog to start paying attention to this hand. Because later I can teach the dog, when you see the next demonstration, the dog can go this way, the dog can go that way, the dog can stay, the dog can go. Wherever your palm is pointed, that's where the dog's gonna go. In the beginning with a puppy, as long as the puppy's following that hand, that's all you need right there. Okay, so let's pick three medium objects now. Green, I want the blue, and then the diamond. Then the diamond, oh, she likes that diamond, huh? Well, <laughs> it's different, it feels Yeah, it feels different. Okay, so let's watch the same thing here. Now you notice she's not pulling on the lead, She's guiding the dog to the object. This one's, you see a little bit more. Yay! Look at that! He's like, yeah. He's like, all right, I'm bad. He's got to get used to it. Yeah. And think of the confidence this is building. Yeah! <laughs> Lindsay, Lindsay, you want to go ahead and grab a golden? Thank you. Yeah. He says, I'm ready for the advanced stuff. So, so look at how this is working this dog in the confidence. And you notice that he's quicker with that now too. And I'm not gonna just do one paw, I'm doing both paws right here. Okay, so let's go ahead and pick the, the advanced one with the large, just one large, well actually, let's do an orange. 
And then let's do the do the purple and then do the peanut. Okay, so orange, purple, peanut. Yeah. Okay. And right. Yay! Yay. <laughs> awesome. Okay, now we do the purple one. Yay! Ooh, even the rear. Okay, let's stop for a second. So he didn't do the purple. He's like putting his little attitude in it and was like, no, nah, I'm not going to do that one. So what did she do? She took him back, to the back. Took him back where the success was. And that one, if it wasn't successful, she'd go back further yeah. and then work your way back up again. So that's the failure point right there. So we're going to stop this exercise here. And then she, can, she knows that she's going to work on purple a little more. And you might want to get a low purple object so it's similar to that color. Uh, you go back to success and keep working forward. And eventually we'll get to the point where this dog will do front feet, rear feet, all four feet. And when you get a dog that will do that on all the objects here, just think about how amazing this dog is ready to learn. Wow you will have phenomenal dogs in the show ring. So let's give Tammy and Superstar a big hand here. And it's as simple as that. Now, what you're doing here is a couple of things. One of the things you're doing is you're establishing yourself as the leader because you're getting them to do that. The second thing that you're doing is you're starting to establish that communication with your hand. So that hand is leading them to that object right there. Now, you want to start off easy and go to complex. So you start off with like a smooth surface like that, maybe flip it over so now it has different texture on it. By going with different texture, you'll find that sometimes the dogs don't want to touch that texture. Like for instance, if I try to lead the dog onto this texture here from that and they don't want to touch this, they don't fully respect and trust you yet to do something like this that they don't want to do. So if you can work with the dog and get them to respect and trust you and they touch that willingly, then now you've gained some ground there by earning respect and trust. So you don't have to go online and buy a lot of expensive stuff. You can get scraps of different types of material, you know, different things like this with different texture. These are great for inside of lining drawers and stuff like that. Fun, you know, make it fun, do all kinds of really cool things. And then once your puppies get comfortable with this, then we can get into doing some actual work. And for that, we're going to we're going to go ahead and get Ponder to come out with my amazing assistant Vanna, otherwise known as Maddie. Is the people will think, "Okay, I'm doing this exercise, but I'm not getting anywhere." The reason why you're not getting anywhere is because the dog is being very sneaky and sneaking in this dominance right here. Okay, so this is Ponder. He's an Australian cattle dog. He is ranked number 11 in the country. Number 11 in the country. And he will only do what you ask if you ask correctly. Uh, he has a very, very strong mind. Okay, I want him to touch just that little target right there. Good. Once they touch the target, you reward them. Now what I want you guys to do is pay very close attention to Maddie's hand with the lead in it and how she will lead him to a target and tell him and give him a command to touch that target. Okay, take him to the, the blue bone. Very nice. Okay, Maddie, kind of... Uh, what you're going to do is I want you to take him to this target, but I want you to let him show the people what a dog would normally do as you start to get into this training where he wants to lead you to this. So break that hand communication. Let's see what he does.
Okay, so what she did was walk over to the target. Now, what amazing thing just happened is he kept looking at her hand for direction. Did you guys see that? That's a big success right there. Let's give a hand because she's worked so hard to get that dog to do that. We can't get him to do it incorrectly now. I'm sure we'll be able to find some people with dogs that we can do this incorrectly with. So 